Mr. Rozier. Start my timer. I'll start it. It started. <laughs> okay, sit back, relax. We're going to have margaritas coming here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's only an hour and a half uh, presentation. John will follow up. I believe he has a two hour PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> little or two, two hours with questions. So, um, I. I did put together a 27-slide PowerPoint presentation. Of course you did. Of course I did, Sharon said. Of course I did. I'm an engineer. Uh, that engineer in me comes out all the time, but I am not going to spend a lot of time on these. But I did do printouts. So if you have any questions later on, my contact information is on there. Feel free to call me. You can text me. You can send me an email. And if that, none of that works, call Sharon, and she has the direct line to my office, and she'll do that. With this, uh, Board of County Commissioners, as you know, there are three county commissioners in Jefferson County. We have to reside within certain geographic boundaries. I live in District 3. We're in District 3 right now. However, as Board of County Commissioners, when we run, we run countywide such that I look for votes all over the county, not just in District 3, bless you, but in District 2 and District 1. Um, I won re-election this last little November, and we will have two commissioners up for, re for election um, this coming November. Uh, Casey Ty is seeking re-election, and Commissioner Zabo was appointed, and uh, she is seeking uh, election in District 1. <coughs> We have a whole host of other characters here. Um, as you see, we have a, a new sheriff. We have a surveyor who's new. Um, all these individuals are elected officials with the exception of Margaret Chapman. She's our public trustee. She's appointed by the governor. This little information about me, I have to put that on there. Um, some of our budget challenges work currently in our budget cycle right now. We actually started in January of this year for 2016. It's a year-long process. It's very important. Making sure that all of our tax dollars go to the highest and best use. That we are good stewards with those tax dollars. And with that, we have seen an increase in demand for services. People say the recession is over, everything is great. However, you go into human services, and we keep having more and more people coming in for service needs. We have more people come in for um, for assistance, for rent assistance, for food assistance. We are not seeing a decrease. However, what we are seeing a decrease in is state and federal funding for human services, and really for county operations. And so, as Representative Heiser about that. He's right behind me. Um, no, but we keep seeing uh, fewer and fewer, fewer dollars coming in, more and more mandated services for the county to provide. And uh, it's, it's really Rob Peter to pay Paul when you get to that situation. So that's kind of the balancing act in which we are doing. Um, as you know, we have infrastructure needs, we have roadway needs, we have bridge needs. I have to tell you, we just won a national award for our snow crews. Aren't they the best? In yes. Conifer and Evergreen, they are phenomenal. In fact, when you, you can drive up in Conifer and Evergreen perfectly fine, the roads are plowed, but you get into Denver, <laughs> and it's, they're impassable. And it's just amazing to me. Uh, they are great crews. We also have some Tabor and Gallagher um, issues that we're dealing with now as our assessed valuations have increased. Uh, you'll see that later on. And um, employee retention. Uh, we're, we're having a difficult time keeping employees um, at the county. And here too, right? Yep. Um, if you look at property tax assessments in 2016, you'll see um, when I say assessments, those are property tax dollars in which we can collect at the county. You may say, hey, my home went up, value 20%. Mine did, 20%. We have condos and townhomes that went up almost 50% in valuation. However, 
We are not allowed. We're not allowed, I'm going to say allowed. We don't collect all that valuation increase when you look at property tax and mill levy. Um, there's different uh, formulas here. We can only, based upon those formulas, we will see an increase in property tax revenue coming to the town, coming to the, come to the county of 3.5%. That is expected to continue based upon Tabor, Gallagher, and other conditions until about 2020. Uh, we have also just looked at, we've, we've, we've cut down on our spend, we've done other things out there. Um, we've really cut back on capital improvements, but we have to be very careful in that because if you keep delaying those capital projects, you're gonna get into trouble. Um, as you can see here, the proposed mill levy for 2016 is reduced. Why is that? Bless you. Is because of um, Tabor and other conditions were not allowed uh, to uh, receive those revenues over uh, maximum growth that we can do is five and a half percent. In this case, it's three and a half percent. So we will be seeing a reduction in the mill levy uh, for 2016. Uh, budget summary, you can look at that. Property tax goes, the property tax that we collect, sorry, I'm standing in people's way. Uh, the property tax in which we collect, 50% um, of it really, 50% uh, of our budget is from property tax and for operations of the county. And then you look at sales, auto ownership, intergovernmentals, and typically human services, and then other um, items in there. Uh, you can see as far as the uh, the adopted numbers. Wow, I didn't do very good on that slide. Sorry, they're all, and I didn't change the title. Um, so you can also see in the proposed budget expenses, salary and benefits make up about 57% of our overall spend at the county. Uh, we're seeing our um, benefits, uh, the cost of health benefits. And other benefits of the county, uh, no different than any of your other, uh, any of your businesses, go up 10 to 15 percent. And so we have to balance: Does the county pay for all that increase? Do we split it with the employees? How do we do that? But we're seeing time and time again an increase in uh, those costs. A little bit more about the total expenditures of the county. Aging well, just so you know, Jefferson County has the highest number of individuals over the age of 65 than any other county in the state of Colorado. That number is proposed to increase double by 2020. All right, so we have taken a proactive approach. We have Susan Franklin, who is this wonderful lady on the top left, and we have a very dynamic and active aging well program looking at our senior population, working with SRC, Senior Resource Center, working with the Aging Well, JCCOA, Jefferson County Council on Aging, working with the District Attorney's Office, working with everybody to say, how are we going to be proactive and not reactive to our aging population? Uh, talk a little bit about transportation. I put together uh, a group called West Connect Coalition. It includes stakeholders from uh, around uh, Jefferson County, all the cities, and also along the corridor, also with City of Boulder, Boulder County, and um, City or Town of Superior, uh, dealing with uh, transportation on the west side of town. I'm, trying, I'm, on, I'm almost nine minutes, so I've got to hurry up. Planning and zoning, as you can see here, um, we're still um, doing some different things. Uh, we have flood two years after the flood. And we still have four and a half, almost six, five million dollars worth of um, modifications, improvements, repair work that we're working on with the state and with FEMA to try to get completed. Um, also, slash collection has been very popular. We had 27 sites this year. Hopefully, that will elevate a little bit more for next year. And it's been well received by the community. Hopefully, you've all taken advantage of that. You can see, just, just so you know, what we've collected to date, and we still have two more collection days or weekends, we've collected 18,000 cubic yards. So if you look at a standard you know, 40 yard container, this, this slash is equivalent to 460 
four of those containers that you can see that that guy's standing next to. That's how much slash that we've, and that's chip slash. That's not the leaf. That's smushed down and compacted slash. And it's, it's, if you take a football field and pile it up, it's 12 feet high for an entire football field. That's how much of that material we've taken out. And I guess I'm done. <laughs> so with that, uh, uh, also just so you know, I have um, spent a considerable amount of time. I, I'm just going to step, step back a bit. You, there are two outstanding chamber directors, and they're both here today. And these chamber directors, Melanie and Betsy, come down to my office every month, and they sit down. And they say, Don, what's going on in the county? How's that going to impact our community? How's that going to impact our, our business owners? How is that going to impact the livability of our community? I want you to just know that they do this all the time. They call, they schedule, they verify, they bring people, they're here. They are dedicated workers for you to make sure everything is going well. One item that was brought up, and, and Tina Frank comes back there for RTD, is looking at an intermountain bus service, um, linking the communities, and if we can do that in the AM and PM peak times, and how to do that. So uh, I've already opened up, Betsy, yeah. Melanie, I've already opened up those uh, channels of communication, and Tina says, you bet, let's talk. Great. Yeah. So with that, I've over expended my time. We'll have question and answers right after this, but I'm going to hand it off to Representative Kaiser. Let him say a few words, and if you have questions for us afterwards, I think would that be okay? All right. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, glad to see everyone again. My name is John Kaiser. I'm a state representative, and uh, House District 25 is the district we all live in here. So just a quick reminder for. Uh, those who don't remember where the boundaries go, it's about 65% of the county, so it's all of uh, western Jefferson County. Uh, the entire western border, north to south, so we've got obviously Every, Genesee, Morris, and Conifer, part of Littleton, part of Golden, uh, a lot of diverse communities, so uh, it's, it's actually a really neat uh, district and I'm really uh, proud and, and honored to represent you down in the capital. So um, as, as you do know, uh, in Colorado we've got a citizen legislature. Uh, citizen legislature, of course, means that we don't meet year-round. We meet uh, during, uh, from January to May, essentially, 120 days per year. And uh, we can meet beyond that. We have interim committees and things uh, that we're doing year-round. So uh, while we don't uh, meet down at the Capitol all the time, it is a full-time job. But um, just about everybody down there has a civilian job, too. And, and uh, outside of uh, public service, um, I, I have two. Um, I'm, a, I'm a reservist in the Air Force still. I was an Air Force Academy graduate and, and I'm a major in the Air Force Reserves uh, right now. So I spend about six weeks a year in uniform, but um, I also uh, am an attorney and I work at a law firm called Hogan Levels. It's, a, uh, it's a, an international law firm. Our office in Denver has about 100 uh, lawyers or so and we're about the fifth largest firm in the world. So, uh, big law firm. But uh, well, Jim, you're a husband too. and a father. Don't forget that. That's your I am. Friend. I am a husband and a father. By the way, uh, we had a, uh, a baby boy here just about a month ago. So uh, yeah. So if it looks like my eyes are closed, they probably are. <laughs> uh, I, I do. Uh, you know, certainly for the for this room, I want to uh, definitely take uh, you know any any kind of questions that you have. But um, I will tell you that uh, I fought really hard to get. Um, committee assignments that I thought would really serve our communities really well and, and um, that would dovetail well with the experience that I have. And so um, I, I'm on the Business Affairs and Labor Committee. So the Business Committee in, in, uh, at the Capitol is you know, where all of our business issues come through, you know, affecting small businesses um, and, you know, and large businesses. So um, that was a really important committee assignment and certainly important for this room. But uh, another one that's uh, really important, I think, yeah, that often gets overlooked is the is the House Committee on Local Government. 
and that committee deals with all kinds of all kinds of issues, and it's the closest committee that we have to um, certainly in our area to the next level of government, which would be the county government because we're unincorporated. So um, we deal with all kinds of uh, things like land use, um, different types of planning issues, public safety, um, sometimes transportation issues come through there, um, and and I've really tried to make sure that we stay focused on avoiding unfunded mandates on the county um, because I am very mindful. We have a close working relationship with the county commissioners. Um, you know that they they constantly express to me that you know this, whatever the state does when we at the state level pass a bill um, that says that a different level of government has to do something, but there's no money to have them ex executed. That's that's really difficult, right? It's an unfunded mandate. So I'm very watchful for that, um, and you know, other things that I'm, I'm really uh, very passionate about is, is just really helping our community too. Uh, we worked really hard. Um, I worked. I spent a lot of time, and, and, and many people in the room here um, shared absolutely. You helped so much on the Schaefer's Crossing um, issue. We got that uh, underway, and, and hopefully we're going to have that resolved. Um, we're working now uh, on a actually a really a really difficult situation that we've got in Evergreen. Uh, with deteriorating roads there that haven't been uh, fixed since the floods, and um, so we're working with seed out in the county, um, and, uh, and and certainly I'm weighing in heavily there. We're trying to bring everybody together um, so we can get things done because you know at the end of the day in Colorado, um, you know our state capital really isn't. It's not a caricature of of what's going on in Washington D.C. It's really not. I mean, 80 percent of the issues that we deal with, uh, they're not partisan issues. They're not Republican. They're not Democrat. They're you know they're just they're uh, they're just Colorado issues, and we agree on most of them. Now, there's certainly uh, some issues that we dis disagree on as far, as far as implementation, and uh, you know, and then there's like maybe five percent of issues that, um, unfortunately, are the only ones that make it in the newspaper. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and those are the ones that uh, that people tend to fight about. But uh, that's not where a majority of my time is spent. Um, it, you know, my my uh, charge, I think, is uh, that you hired me to get things done. So I'm not down there just to make noise. Um, I'm down there to help further public policy and, and help our community. So um, I want to see if I can take any questions, and, and I know Mr. Rozier would uh, certainly be able to do that as well if you, if you have any um, questions at all. And certainly if you um, ever want to meet or if you ever want to uh, come down to the Capitol or you know, if you have a, uh, something that's maybe specific to your, to your business, um, always feel free to give me a call. Um, you know, it's certainly easy to get all of me on social media. Um, email, all that kind of stuff. So I think um, probably most people um, have my contact information already, but if not, I'm happy to, I'll, I'll leave some cards up here. And I see that I am under time, so um, <laughs> if there are any questions, I'll, I'll take them. But um, thanks for uh, inviting us up this morning. What's the status of the 360 some thousand that the county has to pay back to the state for that accounting issue? <laughs> if uh, you didn't hear the question, there's a 300, we were advised by uh, State Farm and Human Services that um, pursuant to an audit finding that they had, they were not doing things properly. And unfortunately for the county, that we now have to pay back about $360,000 uh, to the State Department of Human Services. This is an audit finding that occurred in 2008. And they are now just coming around saying, oh, by the way, and they said, oh, uh, state, I mean, county, you have an option. You can pay it in one lump sum. You can take three years to pay us back. And we said, well, it's your mistake. Um, man up. Take responsibility for that. Let's move on. And they said, well, if you want to take that approach, then we'll just take it out of your next funding cycle. We have to pay it back. Um, and pay them for their mistake. So we're there, we have to pay it. The question is whether we want to do one lump sum or, or over a three year period, more than likely it's going to be a three year period. How does that affect the budgeting? Because I know things are really tight. A budget extremely tight and it will have an effect on the budget. Uh, depending on um, where those dollars come from, whether we can take it from general fund or we can take it from reserve accounts, we can take it, it all depends on where those dollars can come from and how we can negotiate this further. But it, it will have an impact 
It's just how great that impact is going to be is yet to be seen. Okay. I will, uh, I guess, just address one thing real quick. I got asked earlier, and, and other people in the room may be interested to, uh, uh, to know about what's coming up here on the ballot in 2015 statewide. Um, you'll, be, you'll be seeing Proposition BB. Does anybody know what Proposition BB is? It's the, uh, yes, yeah, someone who was saying earlier, the money should be going on the highway as well. Um, so Proposition BB is a, a referred measure that's going back to the voters. Um, in 2013, when, um, when the voters in Colorado decided that we were going to tax marijuana at 25%, uh, um, there's a 10% a sales tax and 50% excise, I think I got that right, 25% um, tax. Um, the, that tax revenue goes into what we call the Tabor bucket, the Taxpayers' Bill of Rights. There's a, there's a cap on how much um, in taxes we can take in as a state, right? So that's why there's always, there's always uh, just, just like your business and just like, uh, you know, just like uh, if you're like me at home, uh, you've got a budget to work with. Uh, uh, you know, we have a, a state budget and things are, things are uh, always very tight, right? Competing resources. So uh, what happened was when we started taxing marijuana, uh, at that time we weren't meeting the Tabor cap. So uh, there really wasn't a whole lot of thought that was put into, well, what happens if we take in more taxes and then um, exceed the Tabor cap? What happens to the, the revenue that is brought in with the marijuana tax? Well, as it is right now, there's $66 million um, that would be refunded to the taxpayers. That would be about $8 per taxpayer. Um, and then some money would go directly back to the marijuana growers, and then there would be a, uh, a discounted tax rate on sales tax for marijuana going forward. Um, and that's because we are right now at our Tabor cap. There will be Tabor refunds that we've, um, that, that uh, will be, the state will be sending back to taxpayers. So Proposition BB asks the voters, um, in 2013, you said that we could tax marijuana at, at uh, 25%, um, and now we're not able to keep that revenue. And if you remember under that, uh, under that proposal, uh, the money is earmarked for capital construction for schools. So under Proposition BB, $40 million of that money will go back to cap directly to capital construction for schools. There's $12 million that goes to um, other various uh, uh, budgeted items at the state level. So um, you'll be seeing that on your ballot and uh, certainly encourage you to, um, you know, to, to make sure and cast that ballot, cast your, cast your vote, and decide what we should do with that. So. Um, other uh, things coming up in 2016. In odd years, uh, we can only have um, we can only have Tabor questions in Colorado, so uh, you, you won't see uh, ballot initiatives. Uh, sometimes you see uh, that you'll see on the even years. Uh, so in 2016, we'll probably see some stuff related to um, oil and gas. There's a, there's a proposal that's out there right now that would allow a community to ban any business. Um, which actually to me is pretty disturbing when you think about it, because um, if they don't, you know, if, if someone got together and decided they didn't like any of your businesses, you know, this past, then they could potentially say, all right, well, you got to close your doors. Um, there's, a, there's, so there's in Colorado we have an initiative process, right, and uh, and, and, and to change our constitution, it just takes 50 percent of the voters um, that are voting in that election. So um, there's going to be a lot of interesting things. Obviously, we'll have a presidential race that. We'll certainly be heating up a U.S. Senate race, um, and then I'll be running for re-election as well. So we'll have our state-level races. Um, so it's, I think, going to be a really long, uh, really fulsome ballot in 2016. But uh, 2015 uh, ballots, I think, are going out in uh, like a week. So you'll be seeing that um, will be coming to your mailboxes very soon. Um, and if we don't have any other questions, yep, sure. Yeah. Um, so one of the big issues that's really affected the corridor and pertains especially to the 25 Tourism Committee is the traffic jams that we have along Highway 285, especially where it merges going through Jefferson County into Park County. Is there any money on the table for CDOT to be able to work on projects to widen the highway and do things like improve the intersections at Kings Valley and that so that we can alleviate some of that burden? Yeah, and, and traffic accidents. And it's, the a, it's a huge accidents. deal, it is, and, and you know, one of the biggest things that you know, I constantly have to remind people, and, uh, and you know, by the way, there's more, uh, one of the challenges that we deal with up in the, the mountain communities, you know, there's more legislators from Denver than there are from the entire western slope of Colorado, right? So yeah. uh, when we start talking about issues in the mountain communities and things like that, you know, the, the Denver legislators all say, well, this doesn't affect my 
uh, you know, my little area in Denver, so you know, why should I care? Well, they should care because they all come here to recreate. <laughs> they all come up here. Um, they're the reason, uh, a lot of times, um, that the accidents occur, frankly. Um, you know, people that treat Highway 285 like I-70, um, it's not an interstate highway. Um, and share it to your question, um, actually what the, uh, there was a plan that was going to um, make uh, a full four lanes on 285 all the way through, um, uh, actually past Bailey. Um, that plan actually got, um, got defunded under Governor Ritter um, when the FASTER program took place. You remember when your registration fees for your cars like quadrupled, um, got really expensive? Um, well, so what happened is, as part of that big package deal, there was a big realignment, a big shift on what would happen with, uh, uh, with respect to all the road construction projects. And unfortunately, um, the, the planned widening of, of that highway is, um, uh, it got taken off that table. So it was planned, and, and now CDOT uh, does not have any plans um, or money or resources right now to, to widen it. Is there anything um, we can do as a community to, like, push that? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's something I'm actually, uh, Commissioner Roser and I are, are uh, <laughs> we're working with CDOT again this afternoon. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly trying to, um, you know, to, to lobby them to say, hey, you know, we have some very, very significant traffic issues and, they, and they're public safety issues, mm -hmm. truly, um, up in our up in our area and certainly in the 285 corridor. And, and it affects businesses, it affects people trying to uh, get home for dinner to see their kids, right? It affects people um, trying to get out of their driveways or get into their driveways, um, you know, when there's big traffic jams. Um, and so it's a, it's partly an educational process to to, to help um, educate the urban legislators that you know, hey, these are these are big issues that uh, you need to um, help us help us address. And so it's a um, it's it's difficult because um, you know we, roads are expensive, roads are very expensive, and we, we don't right now have a funding mechanism um, to do the big Folsom type plans. Um, that I think we probably need, um, and you know that's something that I think we're going to have to solve here in the very near future. But it's something that I'm always thinking about, um, and I'll continue to work on it. Can I add to that real quick? Okay. Um, just know for the last four years, um, CDOT has operated under they only have enough cash to or cash reserves to do maintenance, snow plowing, maintenance, pot, fill potholes, and any new expansion for congestion issues, for anything else. Expansion, widening, and new road construction would have to be done under either a P3 toll type of situation. So they are not um, actively looking at any new um, activities. That's why you see the elevated portion of I-70, which will be partially toll and general purpose lanes. And others, if you look at <coughs> West Connect, if you look at Jefferson Parkway, that's why you're seeing more and more type of toll structures. There'll be a lot of discussions this coming legislature, uh, legislative season, um, having to do with um, uh, called the bond, the bond two, transbond. transbond two, and how to bond for these improvements and how to do different things. But you'll see that it's very tough right now. Sorry, I would love to be able to answer your questions. We're running out of time, but these lovely gentlemen will be here after the meeting. Um, hopefully, we'll have eyes open. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Lots but if you of have coffee. any questions, please feel free to stay afterwards and take advantage of them being up here to answer your questions. Um, thank you guys for stopping by this morning. And I also like to uh, introduce Andrew Dunkley with Senator Cory Gardner's office. Andrew, where are you? He is up here this morning as well. And here for any questions and answers afterwards. Um, I didn't tell them that they're going to stay for another hour, but <laughs> <laughs> ask the questions. I'll ask the questions all you want after the meeting.